Ciao, I'm Marianne Esposito. Today on Ciao Italia, we are traveling down to Sicily to make one fabulous, historic, and delicious lemon almond cake. Ciao, I'm Marianne Esposito. Welcome to Italy, and let's cook real Italian. Aren't they gorgeous? Swiss chard. I knew you said that. I'm in heaven. Think about how healthy this is. That's for you. Sunday sauce. All 20 regions of Italy are fabulous. And every time I do this, I think of my Nonna Galasso because she always made it this way. You want a Goldilocks dough just right. Who doesn't like basil, especially in the summer? Obviously, you have to have pesto sauce at some point, right? I mean, I'm a cook. Why can't I try it? You're the best. No, you're the best. <laughs> Funding for Ciao Italia was made possible by... Uncommon flavors of Europe. From the mountains and pastures of Europe come Asiago PDO, Pecorino Romano PDO, and Spec Alto Adige PGI. Two cheeses and a ham with traditional places of origin. Behind every bite, centuries of tradition. Authentic European foods earn their marks of distinction. Parmigiano Reggiano. Two words, three natural ingredients, countless generations of Italian cheesemakers, 900 years of experience. Parmigiano Reggiano. The only Parmesan. Let's go to Sicily for that, which is right here. So when life hands you lemons, oranges, almonds, swordfish, chickpeas, you know that we're in Sicily, the largest island in the Mediterranean, and where half of my family comes from. So today, and they're right from there, right in the center, Caltanissetta, and I've been there many times. And you know what impresses me about Sicily? the beauty of the food, the freshness of it. And citrus plays a huge role in Sicilian cooking, not just in savory dishes, but in really sweet dishes. And today, I wanna make a very unusual lemon tart for you. This is something that really has an old, old history. You don't see this too much, so I'm gonna make it for you today. And to do it, we have to start with lemons. So we're going to boil three whole lemons. I'm gonna put them right in a pot of water, you bring the water to a boil, you cover, and you allow those lemons to cook for about 45 minutes to 50 minutes. You wanna start with large lemons because lemons in Sicily are as big as grapefruits, and they're much sweeter than our lemons. So we're gonna keep an eye on that. So we're gonna let that boil, and while those are boiling, we're gonna talk about almonds because almonds play a really big part in the cuisine of Sicily but also in this cake. So they become really the flower. So the almonds are the flower and when you're in Sicily in February you see all these beautiful almond trees that are in bloom with these beautiful pink flowers and what do Sicilians do with almonds? They have both sweet and bitter almonds. We only have sweet almonds. So we're gonna make an almond tart today. So we have to start with some almonds. So here we have some sliced almonds and I'm gonna put them into a food processor. So let me get those ready first. So we wanna pulverize these. So you do this in a food processor because this would be very difficult to do if you're doing it by hand. And you wanna pulse those up. You want to leave some texture, so that looks pretty good, see? It's kind of fine, but still has a little bit of texture. So we want to take this out, and you need for this recipe about two and three quarter cups 
of ground almonds. So there's our ground almonds. Put this back in because we're going to need this again. All right, so now that we have those ready, let me move this over here for a minute. We have to prepare our pan. We should do that really before we start cooking with the, uh, with the ingredients. So you want a nine inch spring form pan. See, it has a removable bottom. And now we want to butter that really well. So there is some butter that I put into the microwave, just melted it. And we want to really grease that pan really well, all over. This is the kind of cake that is great for an afternoon tea. It's kind of dense, very dense tasting. And as I said, the, the, the lemons in Italy are much, much sweeter than ours. So what I've done with this recipe is adjust the amount of sugar that I added. So I added more sugar because our lemons tend to be much more sour than Sicilian lemons. So once you have the pan nicely greased with butter, then you want to add a sheet of parchment paper. You can just buy these rounds in any bake store. So you put a sheet of parchment paper in the base and you butter that. And that's going to make it very easy for you to get the cake off of the base. So do that, set that aside. Okay, that looks good, so we're going to put that off to the side. And now we can work with the lemons. So here are lemons that I did earlier. They're very, very soft now. Let me show you. you see, look how soft they are. And we're using everything. So you take the lemons, once they're cool, just chop them coarsely. And by using the entire lemon, we're going to give this really an intense lemon taste. Okay. So then you fish out those seeds. Just take them all out with your hand. And you see the pulp here is just so, so soft. And you put that right into your, into your food processor. And I remember once when I was traveling in Sicily, actually we were doing a show there, I had a friend of mine with me, and uh, I guess she didn't really know the rules of how you should regard Sicilian food. She wanted a cold drink because it was such a hot day. And I was gonna suggest that you have, you know, uh, a limonata, a lemon drink, but she couldn't get away from her Americanism too much, and she wanted to order a Coke with ice, which is kind of unheard of in Italy. Nobody drinks ice cold drinks. And she wanted a lemon slice with it. So they brought her a Coke, a Coke light as they call it, and a lemon that was as big as a grapefruit. And she really laughed about that because she had to, you know, they had to bring her a knife so that she could cut it and just squeeze a little bit of the lemon into her drink. So I always, whenever I'm dealing with lemons, I always remember that story of the Coke and the lemon. All right, so there's the seeds all out. If one or two remain, that's just too bad. Um, we'll put this aside. And now we need to pulverize that. So I'm going to add a half a cup of sugar with this. Now, if you like this a little bit on the more sweet side, then you will have to add more sugar. Let me just take that little stem end out. I don't want that. Okay, here's the sugar. We put the top back on, and we want to get this almost to like a mousse consistency. So you let it go. Okay, let's stop and see where we are. It's looking good, but there's a piece that still needs to be pulverized. So put this back on. Everything has to be smooth. All right, that's looking good. So now we can take this out and put it into a bowl. 
and you see how thick that is. See? It's almost moussey like. So all that goes into a bowl. Take out that blade. Okay. So there is our lemon mixture. Now what we have to do is work with eggs. So let's put this aside and beat up some eggs. We need six eggs for this. So to separate eggs, get one of these, a little egg separator. There's two ways to do it actually. You can use an egg separator like this or you could let the egg fall through your hands. It gets a little messy, so let's use the separator. So we want to separate the yolks from the whites. And these you can find anywhere in a little kitchen store. So there's five. And here's our last one. And this is what's going to lighten this cake for us, in addition with a little baking powder that I'm going to use. OK, there's our sixth yolk. Here are our whites. Those will be whipped separately. So now we have our yolks, and we want to put them in a mixer. You can either use a mixer like this or use one that's a handheld mixer. And we're going to add sugar. All right, let's beat up those yolks and add some sugar. We need about a cup of sugar. You want to add that gradually into the yolk so that it's well, well incorporated. You know, and as I'm making this, I'm thinking about other things that you could do with lemons. One of the things that Sicilians love to do with lemons is to make a lemon salad. Yes, just sliced lemons, very thinly sliced with some extra virgin olive oil and some salt and pepper. And that, that's a typical salad in Sicily. Now we would say, oh my goodness, that would pucker my lips and I wouldn't be able to do it, but it is a very common dish. Or you could combine lemons and oranges because the oranges are another wonderful citrus fruit from Sicily that is used in a lot, a lot of recipes. So we want to really get that sugar well mixed in with that, with the egg yolks, which means that occasionally you have to stop the machine and wipe down the sides to make sure that all that sugar is in the bottom of the bowl and not in the top. Okay, one more good squeeze here. Okay, that's looking good. So now, we're gonna take this out and add it to the almonds. So it's all nice and smooth. Take that out. And here's that almond mixture. And to this I'm going to add some baking powder and a little salt and this egg mixture, the egg yolks. And you'll notice that there really is no other fat in this cake besides the yolks. I mean, where is the butter? There's no butter in here except for the butter that we used to grease the pan. So it makes it, it's a very unusual, unusual cake. And you really should eat this in small amounts because it's very intense. So you mix this all up, get it all well combined. And then you're gonna lighten this batter by whipping those whites and folding them into the, uh, the almonds. Now that you have that, we're going to transfer this to a larger bowl because we still have to mix those almonds. And we're going to add the moussey lemon mixture. That goes in. Mm starting to smell really, really great. And we want to mix that in now. OK, 
Okay. I told you about almonds being both bitter and sweet in Sicily. And in this country, we cannot have bitter almonds because there is prussic acid in bitter almonds. And it's been deemed to be unhealthy. But in Sicilian cooking, you use both types of almonds. But for this cake, we're using just, of course, sweet almonds that we can find in the grocery store, California almonds. So that really loosened up that mixture. OK. So now we're ready to do the whites. You want to make sure that they're at room temperature because they will whip much better than if they're cold. And the other thing to remember about this, you do not want any speck of any kind of fat in there. Otherwise, your efforts are going to be useless because the egg whites will not whip. They do not like fat. That means the beater must be clean. The bowl should be very clean. No residue of any kind of grease or fat. So let's put our whites in. And wh what we want to do here is whip these till s there are soft peaks. So we start kind of like on medium speed. And then you have to watch them. And what you're really looking for is something that's glossy looking, but is not real, real stiff. Because if it's really stiff, then you're going to have trouble folding it in to the batter. And we have a pretty stiff batter here because we've got these almonds. So let's stop this now. Let me show you where we are. Let me get a spatula. So here we have egg whites. Beautiful, see? They're not falling off, so we're going to take those off now. So we're ready to fold these into that almond mixture. And Sicilian desserts, for the most part, are extremely sweet. They're very, very sweet. So you want to take a little bit at a time. And this is where I, I really think of my mom whenever I do this technique of folding from the bottom to the top. And she would always tell me, you know, you cannot rush this process because if you do, you're going to deflate all of the work that you did. So you have to just be very patient, very gentle, and get that mixture incorporated. And as you do, you see it's just kind of lightening up this batter, this consistency. So I do this about, you know, in increments of three. And you see how nicely they fold in. They're not so stiff that they're not mixing in with the, with the almond mixture. OK, so let's add the next half. And you never leave anything behind. That was the other thing my mother taught me. I remember having her on a show once where she made her famous whiskey cake. And of course, she didn't understand that on television you have limited time to do these things. And she wanted to get every speck of batter and egg whites out of that pan, which of course was eating up time for the program. But she was very frugal and she wasn't going to waste anything. My arm is getting a real workout here. OK, this is looking good. And now we can put this into our 9-inch springform pan that we've already greased with butter and lined with parchment paper. Look at how fluffy that is. So there's our pan. Oy. And it goes. Mm, it just fits. And then you want to smooth it out some so it's even all the way around. Then give it a tap to get out any air bubbles, just like that. And now it's ready for the oven. Now we are going to make candy lemons. And to do that, you want to start with a cup of water and a cup of sugar. And you put it in a pot and stir the sugar into the water over low heat to begin with until that sugar dissolves. Then we are going to add lemon slices to this. 
and we're going to cook this until the liquid really reduces almost to about a third. And that's going to really concentrate the flavor of those lemons. So the first thing you do is really, you really want to get that sugar well dissolved in the water. All right, let's get started on those lemons because when life hands you lemons, you make candied lemon slices. So again, we're starting with lemons and you want to cut them into thin slices. You need two probably for this cake. Why make one? Because going through all this effort, you might as well have several because these you can keep in the refrigerator. Okay, so once you have them sliced like that, take the nicest ones, leave off the ends. So you put them in and try to keep them in a single layer if you can, so use a wide enough pot. And over medium heat, you allow these to cook, as I said, until that liquid really reduces down to about a third. And as those lemons are really cooked into that syrup, they now have concentrated flavor. And the next thing I do is dip them, when they're cool, into some coarse sugar. I dip them on both sides in coarse sugar. And you can see the difference between these lemons and those lemons. It just depends on what you get. And once you have them in the coarse sugar, you put them on a, on a, a grate or a, a, a rack, and you let them dry in the open air until they're really, really concentrated dry. So once I have them like that, I usually keep them in the refrigerator uncovered. So that is going to be the decoration for our almond lemon cake. To make the glaze, we want to use a cup of confectioner sugar. So here we have some confectioner sugar in a bowl. And I'm going to whisk in some milk. You could use cream for this if you wanted to, or water. You could use lemon juice to carry out that whole theme. So you want to make kind of a glazy consistency. So you have to control the amount of liquid that you put in here. So I get it to the point where I can feel that it's stiff against my, uh, my whisk. And now what I'm going to do is, see, I want a nice flow like that off the whisk. See? I'm going to add this, which reminds me so much of Sicily. I open the cap and I'm back there because it has so many wonderful citrus flavors. It's called Fiore, Fiore di Sicilia, so the flower of Sicily. So I add, you just don't need a lot, uh, just a little dribble, maybe a quarter of a teaspoon, and that gives you an enhanced citrus flavor. You can find that uh, in a you know, kitchenware store or online. So now it's looking good. I'm going to give it just a tad more milk, not much. That's good. And that's going to be enough to glaze the top of that almond lemon cake. Put it over that cake and let it go with a light touch, the back of a spoon. Just let it find its own path on the, uh, on the top of the cake. And if it dribbles down the side, all the better. So, move that aside for a minute. And here are our candied lemon slices. So you could either put them on whole, you could cut them up in half. And this just reminds me so much of what you would see in a pasticceria in Sicily. I mean, this is a really, really old, old recipe. I don't know about you, but I'm ready. I'm ready for a slice. No cake in a box could ever compare to the cake that we made today with two key ingredients from Sicily, almonds and lemons. And this cake is like history on a plate, and you have to try it. And remember, we did it with candied lemons over the top and a nice little confectioner's glaze. And until I see you Nella Cucina again, I'm Marianne Esposito. Ciao. 
Marianne shares the secrets of three generations of Italian cooks with Ciao Italia Family Classics. Filled with over 200 authentic recipes from Marianne, her mother, and grandmothers, this fully illustrated cookbook is available wherever books are sold and on the web. Learn more about the culture and cuisine of Italy's many regions and prepare many of their unique recipes by visiting Marianne at her website, ciaoitalia.com. Funding for Ciao Italia was made possible by Uncommon Flavors of Europe From the mountains and pastures of Europe come Asiago PDO Pecorino Romano PDO and Spec Alto Adige PGI Two cheeses and a ham with traditional places of origin Behind every bite, centuries of tradition Authentic European foods earn their marks of distinction. Parmigiano Reggiano. Two words, three natural ingredients, countless generations of Italian cheesemakers, 900 years of experience. Parmigiano Reggiano. The only Parmesan.